This is Mark Anderson for Kellogg Community College and we're going to spend this first uh, video, uh, part one of two, to do some um, rationals and we're going to talk about some of the basics of rationals, cover a technique um, called the flip trick at the end of this and what we mostly want to do in this video is set up some ground rules for simplifying rationals. Um, so in simplifying these rationals um, a lot of you are going to do okay with problems like this um, in fact, um, I usually ask my students uh, if they're a little weak with exponents to write them out twice or, you know, the number of times that's in the corner here. So this would be x plus 3 uh, and x plus 3. And in terms of simplifying, we are going to look at the numerator and the denominator and see if there's something we can do to make the problem more simple. Now, I noticed that a lot of people use the word cancel and canceling actually is a little bit of a lazy word in terms of mathematics because nothing actually cancels. Um, for example, if I look at these x's, um, some people might say, well, since there's an x above another x, these would cancel, but technically they divide and make 1. Um, so 2 times 1 times x plus 3 is the same as saying 2 times x plus 3. Um, and same thing down here, and I can also consider this simplifying by dividing this by this to make 1. Um, and again, you know, canceling will be said, and I might even use that word later on in these videos. But what I really mean is to simplify, because now what I have in my numerator is a 2 times 1 times 1, and 4 times 1 times 1 times x plus 3. Um, now, we're going to simplify this uh, rational here, because uh, the 2 and the 4 can both be divided by 2, which leaves 1 half, or 1 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator because 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 4 twice. So my numerator is going to be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, and my denominator is going to be 2 times 1 times 1 times x plus 3, so 2 times x plus 3, and this is fully simplified. And this is a kind of problem that you're not going to you know, sweat over, but boy, these two, boy, they cause a lot of trouble. And usually out of students who are very zealous about trying to cancel things when they should never be canceled in the first place. Uh, for example, in this problem, I never want you to cross out the two x's. And this is an illegal step um, because 2x plus 5 over 2x is not equivalent to 5. Um, if I just plug a million, for example, into, into x, you know, 2 million plus 5 over 2 million is not the same thing as 5. Um, but really what this brings up is a point that um, binomials are somewhat protected. In fact, I like to think of the binomial as having a shield around it. And that shield basically prevents any part of it from being uh, dismantled or simplified or canceled um, unless there's a perfect match. Like in the previous example here, we could simplify the x plus 3 over x plus 3 because, lo and behold, they're exactly the same. So these do get canceled, but you cannot just pick part of a binomial and cancel it with a monomial. In fact, what I wrote down in class today was a binomial is protected from monomials and other unsimilar binomials. So for example, you can see in this problem here where 2x plus 3 is over x plus 3. Again, someone might think, oh, I can just cancel out the x plus 3 over x plus 3. Well, that's false. You can't do that. None of these things that I just did up here are legal steps. Because again, I can just give you the example of plugging a million in for x and 2 million 3 is not the same as, or like basically what you're saying, if I can just cross out the x plus 3 over x plus 3, that this answer is 2. But that's not true. Because if I could plug in a million for x, I get 2 million 3 over 1 million 3, and that's not the same thing as 2. Um, so again, a binomial is protected against invading monomials, or in this case, let me write it down here, a binomial that looks different. So this 2x plus 3 is not the same thing as x plus 3, so there's no simplification here. This problem and this problem cannot be simplified further. So if you want to put parentheses around there, it's a stylistic choice, like a shield, um, go ahead, uh, anything that kind of works for you, but I just don't want you to make simple mistakes where you just, well, can I cross out the twos? No. Can I cross out the x's? No, you can't do it at all because that binomial is protected by that binomial shield that I um, so uh, created. But um, if we get to a problem like number one, 
Um, th there, there's no uh, pluses or minuses in this at all. There's no binomials. This is all one mon monomial divided by another monomial, which means I can divide and or I, I can simplify this any way I want. But I want to first of all highlight excluded values. And what does that mean? Um, it, there's a law in algebra that we can't divide by zero. So, and you try it on a calculator, it'll tell you you can't divide by zero. So in this problem here, we would have an issue if the x in the denominator was a zero. So I'm saying x cannot be zero. I would also have a problem if the y was zero. Because if the x or the y was zero, then uh, this whole denominator would be zero. Because you know if you multiply one thing by zero, it becomes a zero. So that's what happens. This whole denominator would become zero. And then poof, um, you'd be have a division of zero error. So let's get that out of the way, um, and we'll do this at the start of every problem with some, you know, some asterisks here and there about when we shouldn't um, look at uh, the excluded values. But we'll we'll do these for most of the problems so we can get ready when we're solving for x um, to look for specific values that might have a conflict. All right, so we found our excluded values. We looked in our denominator only, and we found that x and y both cannot be zero. Okay, we set that off to the side and make those our danger numbers that we cannot have in our final answer if we were solving for x. And now what we're gonna do is just do some simplification. So the number that divides 32 and 24 the best is eight. So that makes it this four thirds. Now, using my power rules, if I have x cubed in the numerator and x in the denominator, 3 minus 1 is 2. So that would give me x squared in the numerator. And if I used my power rules again, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, or 3 in the denominator. Uh, another way to look at it is if you had 1y in the numerator and 4y's in the denominator, uh, 1y would simplify with another y, leaving me with 3y's. I mean, I'll be interchanging these um, exponent rules to suit my fashion here, um, but that's uh, previous knowledge from uh, earlier chapters or classes. So now what we have is 4x squared over 3y cubed. And there it is. There is my answer to the problem, and I have my excluded values over here. Um, you can see in problem number two, um, you can write this numerator out five times if you want. You know, x minus 2. I obviously do not need you to do this if you feel like you've got a good grasp of what this problem is asking here. And please do not try to foil or distribute all of these problems together because you're seeing, you're going to see at the end here when I write x minus 2 seven times. Whew. There's my fourth time. There's my fifth time. There's my sixth time and my seventh time. What we're looking to do is to simplify this. And since I said that the binomials can only be simplified if they're exact matches, well, here they are. Five exact matches on top and bottom, leaving me with a one in the numerator, and then an x minus two to the second power in the denominator. Or I could write those out you know, twice. Um, it does, uh, it shows you in this kind of problem that you could have simplified it or done this a lot of different ways. In fact, u to the fifth power over u to the seventh power is one over u to the second power. By having five on top and seven on the bottom, you're left with two on the bottom. But this brings up a good idea about, or a good question about the excluded values. Well, what you have to have is you don't want that x minus two to be equal to zero. So if I solve for x by moving the two to both the other side using an addition inverse operation, now I have x is not equal to two. So there's my danger number for this problem. I can have anything for my x in the world as long as I don't have 2 in for my x. All right, so then we're moving on to some more challenging problems here. Let's do 3 through 6. And this is going to require a little bit of factoring information here. So let's uh, take a look at problem 3. First of all, let's look at our excluded values. x cannot be 0. And the reason why, if I look in that denominator, I have x to the third power. and 0 to the third power is 0, and that would make the entire denominator go um, to 0. Um, and also, x cannot be equal to 9. Um, this is a similar trick that you might have learned back in the factoring chapter with me, where you ask yourself, when would x minus 9 hit the ground? And the answer would be 9. But the longhand way of doing it is we would say, well, x minus 9 cannot be equal to 0. So we'd add 9 to both sides, and lo and behold, that's where I get my x cannot be equal to 9. Um, another way to think of it is like what number could I plug into this x to make that parenthesis be a 0? And that also would give me a 9. So these are my excluded values. 
Um, now we do some simplification. Divide the top and bottom by 5, and uh, that would give me 5 sixths. Ooh, almost had a, almost left that mistake there. Um, I have 2 on top and 3 on the bottom. That leaves me with 1 on the bottom using my exponential rules. And these fully simplify. So my answer is 5 sixths x with these two numbers. X cannot be 0 or 9. Now, an interesting thing to talk about right now is you'll notice that this x minus 9 was simplified from the problem. And if I plug 9 into my final answer, I wouldn't have a division of 0 problem. But since this was back at the time we started it, you can't actually have that there. So you, that's the reason why you can't have, um, you, you got to do your excluded values at the start. Now problems 4, 5, and 6 all require a little bit of factoring skills from the previous chapters or your previous course. So this first pattern is something called a difference of squares. Uh, it's a difference of squares because they're being subtracted and the first number is a perfect square or a rootable problem like 1x squared is rootable to x and x and the square root of 16 is 4 and 4 and the difference of squares patterns is a plus minus. If you foiled that out you would get no middle terms so you just have your F cable and your L cable creating this um, space. Now in the denominator we're going to factor out a 2 which leaves me with X minus 4 and that's going to give me my danger number. X cannot be equal to 4 in this problem because if I look just at my denominator and I don't have to look in my numerator since we can divide 0 all day long um, you can't have a 0 in your denominator. So if you plug a 4 in here, 2 times 0 would make division of 0 error. So we're going to do some simplification. That divided by that is 1. So x plus 4 on the top divided by 2. Oh, that doesn't look like a 4, does it? Um, so there it is. There's my final answer with my uh, excluded value. Problem number 5 has some more factoring to do. Here's another difference of squares pattern, which is x plus 3 x minus 3. Now down here this is an easy trinomial and uh, the easy trinomial would be what two numbers multiply to make 9 and add to make negative 6 and that is negative 3 and negative 3. Well um, this would be a great time to do your excluded values. x cannot be equal to in this case a positive 3 because that would poof poof it would uh, give you a 0 for both of these and 0 times 0 is 0 and we can't divide by 0 no matter what the numerator is. Um, so um, we're now going to do some simplification. So the x minus 3's go away. So now I have x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now this is where I try to push the class and say, hey class, what can you cancel next? And I'm usually able to bait someone in or troll somebody to say, oh, you know, you're gonna, you know, cancel the x's or the 3's, but you can't do that. You can't actually do that because this is again a bonded binomial, it's protected. So you cannot just cancel the x's or the 3's or any of it because it's not a perfect match. So for number 6, um, it's best to factor this before we, um, it's best to factor this before we um, get to where we need to go here because, um, which is finding our excluded values because if you uh, try to find your excluded values now it'll be a little bit tough to guess and check but if we do the factoring of the denominator which is x minus 4 and x plus 2 um, this tells us our danger numbers. Our danger numbers x cannot be equal to a positive 4 or x cannot be equal to a negative 2. I wrote it this way. That's just a stylistic difference of writing two separate x's and not equal to statements. But there it is. These are two numbers that if I plug it into the denominator will cause a problem. Also, uh, you'll note that I didn't look at the numerator. The numerator has no relevance to division of zero error or finding those um, excluded values. Now in our numerator, we're going to say that we're going to have x minus 4 and x uh, plus 1, because those are two numbers to multiply to make negative 4 and add to make negative 3, and bam bam, simplif simplify, x plus 1 over x plus 2, and no we can't cancel out the x's. That is not a legal step. So to finish up this worksheet here, um, I'm going to go down and tell you about this little trick here for simplification called the flip trick. Um, the flip trick is used exclusively in problems that are out of order. Um, so if you look at number 7's denominator, um, yeah, you could factor that into 3 plus x, 3 minus x, because it is a difference of squares. But it's not going to help you, because the numerator um, isn't going to have a 3 minus x combination, or 3 plus x combination. In fact, my numerator 
is going to be set up as x minus, or excuse me, plus 5, and then x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is call a flip trick, which is when I have a problem that is fully out of order, what we're going to do is we're going to factor, that is a horrible looking A, factor out a negative 1. We're going to factor out a negative 1. And to factor out that negative 1, that will allow us to flip the order of this. And let me show you all the work that goes into doing that. And, and some of you may not show all this. But what, what we do in the first step is we start with our problem in the wrong order. And we can't just literally flip these around because um, of the commutative property. So if I can factor out a negative 1, which I will do so here, um, I can make that 9 into a negative 9 and the x into a positive x squared. And now with the commutative property, I can flip these around. Um, so I've got negative 1 and I've got x squared minus 9. And now I have a difference of squares that looks kind of like every other difference of squares problems. So I'll just transfer that up here. So negative 1 is now being multiplied by x plus 3, x minus 3. Now I will say a couple of different rules here because we are going to cancel out these x, sorry, simplify these x minus 3s. But our final answer has to be a little bit more tight than all of this because our x plus 5 is in the numerator our x plus 3 is in the denominator. And I have said throughout my courses that you cannot write a negative 1 um, as a multiple multiplier of something. I mean, so I have seen students write their answer like this, with the negative in front, without you know a 1. And that's, that's going to be allowable. I'm, I'm pretty liberal about that. The book and most other professors would probably encourage you to put that negative out in front of the problem, because the negative, as long as one of them's there, um, you're going to be okay. Um, and I've seen students also put the numerator in parentheses, and that would be fine too. I, again, I'm going to be pretty liberal about um, what I, expect, I accept. And uh, again, I'd say the most, um, I'd say textbook way of writing the problem is with the negative out in front. Um, and you wouldn't have parentheses around top or bottom in that case. All right, and so for the final problem of this side, we are going to take a look at this trinomial in the denominator, knowing that if I factor out a negative 1, that entire trinomial changes order um, and changes sign. And I'm skipping steps to, to, to make this more efficient for me. Because what I showed over here is all the work, and what I'm doing here is just doing a little bit of it mentally. If I factor out a negative 1, this becomes a negative 5, a negative 4, and a positive x squared. And I can just reorder that um, using my uh, order, uh, sorry, my commutative properties um, and making sure that my negatives and positives say the same. Um, uh, and then that makes it legal. It, it makes it um, a fully simplifiable algebraic step. Um, we would have to factor uh, in the numerator here. We'd have to factor out two numbers to make 10 and add to make negative 7, which is negative 5, negative 2. And in the denominator, we factored out the negative 1, which we're going to drop the 1 in just a bit here. But we're going to find two numbers to make a negative 5 and a negative 4. That's x minus 5 and x plus 1. And now, pew, pew, we have these simplified. Our x minus 2 is in the numerator. Our x plus 1 is in the denominator. And whoop, there it is. There's our negative to take care of what we need in that space. And thank you for watching the first uh, part of this two-part uh, video series on uh, radicals. Uh, we did simplification of radicals today, and we also showed the little flip step to get things in order uh, for better simplification. Again, thank you for watching.